Hello and welcome back to Breaking Ground on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon. You can contact us on social media at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. Now, following on our theme today, which is all around the National Construction Summit, which is coming up on the 21st of March at the Sports Ireland campus in Blanchestown, our next guest uh, is Fergal Lawler, Managing Director of Lawler Consultancy. And Fergal is going to talk us maybe through some of the more innovative side of construction and modern methods of construction um, that, that people can expect to see when they attend the event. Fergal, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Carl, for having me. Um, Fergal, you might just start by maybe telling us a little bit about your own consultancy, Lawler Consultancy. What kind of projects are you involved in yourself? Yes, it's a technical advisory uh, business. It's it's a new business, less, less than a year old, and comes on, on the back of almost 30 years industry experience on both client side consulting and more laterally as a main contractor. Um, the business is, is focused in on advising clients on off-site construction and large project development with, with a bias towards uh, the PPP uh, market and, and the um, social housing bundles that are, are currently in the uh, in the market. Uh, Fergal, what's your take on where we are right now in terms of uh, MMC adoption? Um, so, for example, you know, there's certainly a conversation, national conversation going on, and a lot of that is pointing to MMC almost as an emergency response when we know that the potential is so much greater than that. Um, so because you have the perspective of working across a number of different projects with different clients, where would you say objectively Ireland is in terms of MMC adoption? Indeed, and, and I think the, the use of modular construction for the Ukrainian is, is a very appropriate response. Um, but I think the, the use of 3D volumetric as a single unit um, is appropriate for that, but perhaps difficult to extrapolate that to its impact on the wider uh, marketplace, and particularly in the space of the three-bedroom semi, semi-detached uh, type housing model. Uh, for which there is quite a significant difference between the the singular uh, volumetric and the four modules that would would form the basis of of a three bedroom uh, semi detached house. Um, I think the the Irish market has been predominantly based on the the two D uh, panelized uh, system um, and and less so on on the three D volumetric in relation to residential. I think we've had some great experience uh, and there's a number of very successful companies delivering 3D volumetric in the educational uh, space, um, but less so in, in, in housing. And I think if we look to our, our nearest neighbour in relation to the experience in that, in that market, uh, you've had a number of, of high profile um, businesses there that, that have, have struggled in terms of house and uh, Caledonian modular and you've two very large uh, companies with with Top Hat and LNG Modular that have had huge amounts of money uh, poured into them um, and really struggling to the traction to to get their their role. And then you look at at, at uh, John Fleming and 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 Vision Modular and Tide Construction, where that's working extremely well because of the vertical integration of those businesses and. That comes back to the essence of offsite manufacturing, which is uh, involving um, from the client, involving the manufacturer um, at the early stages and DFMA uh, being the, the, the key and repetitive aspect of, of that being a successful model. Very good. There's a few things in what you've said there, maybe that, that we might certainly want to unpack. So, for example, um, you talk about maybe the, the difference between some public and private sector uh, on the procurement side, you know, particularly look at the Irish marketplace, um, has the state stepped up as one of the largest procurer of construction in Ireland? Has the state stepped up to enable MMZ? I, I think it, it has taken the, the correct steps. I mean, one of the, the most recent publications by the Department of Housing is the Design Manual for Quality Housing. And that uh, accepts the, the pattern design uh, approach to uh, design for manufacturing and and assembly. So that's a that's a very important part. Um, large public procurements um, are allowing for various types of um, of structural response, whether that be timber frame, um, masonry, or uh, a panelized solution. So I think public procurement is is very cognizant of not prejudicing uh, the outcome. 
but I think you have to look at, at scale factors. You have to look at how far a planning permission uh, has prejudiced the solution um, that, that is, is, is envisaged. But it's no doubt the case that the optimal solution for MMC is when the appropriate um, design consultants are involved at the very earliest stage and the most successful outcome is, is, is there. I guess planning permission drawings typically bring us, uh, uh, depending on the discipline, but probably bring us around 25 to 30% of the design journey. And if their efforts are to uh, to give maximum opportunity, there there's a, a trick that's being missed in terms of that offsite uh, manufacturing journey. So I think that if if public sector clients can make that decision from from the outset, I think that will be, benefit everyone. I, I think it's a very important point you're making there about kind of early engagement. And we know that, um, you know, private bodies uh, and organizations like the RIAI have done great work towards the design for manufacturing assembly. Um, so you, you've talked about maybe what the public sector is doing. Has the private sector embraced this at an early enough stage? I, I think those there, there are certainly um, large private sector developers who are cognizant of um, the control of their own supply supply chain, both in terms of the material and 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 labour availability, uh, and you've seen that in consolidation of businesses becoming vertically integrated and going back to the to the. Um, to the vision modular and, and tight construction model, I think that model uh, will be will be replicated, and that addresses some of the biggest challenges that we've already discussed, uh, which is that early involvement. So when that decision is made before even the planning permission drawings are commenced, then I think that 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 vertical control, that ability to uh, to design to the pattern design limit the number of uh, housing typologies um will it will all lead to a most uh, the most successful and optimal outcome and Fergal, there's a couple of things you know when you talk about vertical integrations and and scaling factors and control of the supply chain in a country and a marketplace the size of ireland that's all coming back to the same thing which is manufacturing facilities being acquired um so that actually their pipeline then is almost exclusively with maybe one developer um, or, or with one main contractor. Where does that leave the potential for growth across manufacturers in Ireland? Um, and and wh what does that say about our capacity in Ireland? Well, I think perhaps one of the most, when you distill down the capacity of the offsite manufacturing businesses to respond to demand, uh, the first element that they must have is the agreement certification, the IAB certification, of which, as we speak today, uh, there are about nine uh, such certificates in the in in the marketplace. Now we expect that there are others um, that are coming on board. So whether you are an independent manufacturing uh, business or it's part of a vertically integrated um, business, that that is your first. Uh, key to doing that so that's both a barrier to entry and your market platform once you once you have have secured that so within that then you will have a disaggregation of um of a spectrum of businesses at a lower to higher turnover uh, and and volume that that plays that plays with that and um, you know obviously in this discussion we've really only touched on 2d and 3d but you know there are seven categories of modern methods of construction um, you know how how significant a, a contributor to Ireland's construction industry is MMC? Well, I think if 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 you you look at other sectors uh, such as the the data and and energy sectors, the principles of offsite manufacturing is hugely significant. So whether that be remote plants that are uh, that are built, um, uh, turbines, etc. Uh, the, the more you can do off-site, because particularly in energy projects, they tend to be in the most inhospitable uh, and, and, uh, and challenged uh, locations. So when you bring everything back uh, to um, the ability for a team to work within a factory, a controlled environment in a factory setting, 
um, then you are going to get uh, optimal uh, optimal returns. It's also the case that uh, when you are within uh, an energy sector, a data center, or indeed um, residential settings, you have a delineation of, of skills and trades on site, uh, which means that one person doesn't cross over in, 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 into another. Those delineations are broken down significantly in factory settings because they are task oriented. So therefore, a person is able to do multiple aspects whereby they wouldn't be, they'd be quite restrictive uh, and based on their, their previous or trade background um, to, to do that uh, on, on site. You know, I, I feel like when we talk about MMC a lot, we're always talking about the benefits, which which obviously are important, but there's there's a lot that goes into fully realizing those benefits. There's a lot of things that have to be done well in order to fully realize the benefits. Um, you know, and I know that that you're going to be speaking to the industry about this at the National Construction Summit now on the 21st of March. But I, just to give people a flavor of what they can expect, I mean, what are the steps to improving the use and, and increasing the adoption of MSC in Ireland? Well, I think certainly the the panel that I'll be contributing to at the at the summit will be looking at disaggregating what seems to be um a smaller number of, of very large projects and a lot of both suppliers and um, uh, small, smaller uh, contractors may feel that they're excluded from the market. But I think um, we, we will be disaggregating that and, and demonstrating how, um, how a, a contract such as a PPP contract, um, whilst it's, it has a, a two a two year construction period, it has a 25 year life after that with lots of facilities management uh, work and life cycle work with, within that. So there we will be, I suppose, creating a, a platform where uh, innovative innovative product, product products um, and delivery mechanisms uh, by innovative uh, contractors and suppliers um, and demonstrating how um, how they can contribute uh, to that for the benefit of both the industry and, and indeed their own businesses. Um, thanks, Fergal. And I suppose finally, before we finish up, you know, we, we, there is no doubt there, there's a there's a, a clear case to be made towards um, embracing innovation in all of its forms across the built environment. Um, but we know that this can have challenges, say, on traditional funding models, and I, I suppose ultimately impacting the realization of the project so is is this the kind of is, is this the kind of challenge or, or marketplace reality that you're going to be dealing with at the construction summit on the 21st indeed and, and everyone has from a, a cash flow uh, point of view um undoubtedly the easiest route on on cash flow um will be a more traditional route of of progress of progress payments um however MMC inverts that that curve, and it, it involves the expenditure significantly at the earlier stages of the of the project. So that means a significant demand on, on capital availability from a client uh, a client's perspective. Now the government are obviously in a better place uh, to to be able to do that, but um, one of the the challenges of MMC is, is that impact on the client's uh, and main contractor's cash flow. Um, so uh, that, again, supports that vertically integrated solution where all of the benefits and synergies of that uh, work work together. So I think the challenge is for the MMC world is, is to be able to demonstrate that the overwhelming benefits that it brings in time, cost and quality um, outweigh uh, the, the negative aspects, if you like, on, on funding, um, because the cost of funding will be greater um, in the use of MMC uh, because you, you are effectively funding the project to a greater extent at the early stages. Uh, and that makes sense, Fergal. I suppose, finally, as, as a sector, are we doing enough to bring all of the stakeholders, whether they're state, private sector, are, are we bringing enough? Are we doing enough to bring the stakeholders along on this journey with us? Well, I, I think you know we, we've probably been talking about MMC for for the for the last two years. We've talked about innovations. There's lots of conferences. There's lots of CPD days um, around around this. Um, but ultimately, it's down to 
the the market demand that is there and um it's probably more external pressures that will do that such as the unavailability of of labor or or, or key uh, materials for the sector so necessity will will support that 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 innovation so i suspect we need a step change in that demand and um that will come from both the industry itself realizing the benefits uh, but also perhaps some external factors um dri driving that necessity as well Okay, look, um, certainly the National Construction Summit, which has taken place at uh, Sports Ar Sport Ireland campus in Blanchestown on the 21st of March. I think it's a good place to continue this conversation. And certainly I look forward to attending the panel um, and hearing what yourself and uh, your peers have to say on that. So thank you so much for joining us today. That was Fergal Lawler, Managing Director of Lawler Consultancy. We need to take a quick break now. Stay tuned. <laughs>